Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a get ready with me, but first of all I'm going to show you how I got this enormous blowout. I mentioned this recently that I was going to make this video and I never got around to it. So the first part of this video I'm just going to kind of give you a little, here's the, the background of it and then we'll get into just a chatty get ready with me and this is how it turned out. Okay, so I have uh, blasted my hair with dry shampoo. Every time I style my hair, my hair's just like really prone to getting very, very greasy very quickly. Literally washed it yesterday and it was already feeling like, brushed it through and now, old school, we're gonna go in with mousse. I've, this is the only mousse that I've tried, so I can't tell you that a more expensive mousse doesn't work better, but Bristow's old school mousse. I'm just gonna put it all through the lengths of my hair. My hair's totally dry, it's not at all damp. I'm even gonna comb a little bit of it through my roots, a little, because I do want some oomph. The tongs I'm using, I bought from Amazon. They're from Tony and Guy, I'll find the link for you below. Uh, I'm just kind of curling it as you usually would, and then um, going the same way with a Velcro roller, which you can buy from literally everywhere. I think some of these are from Primark. Um, and then I'm pinning it up with a bobby pin. You might think the bigger the rollers, the more volume, but I find the bigger the rollers, the more you get kind of like a big blowout situation. You get like a nice curve in your hair, but if you want a lot of root volume, you want a smaller roller. Okay, I'm gonna kick off with the Vitamin Enriched Face Base from Bobby Brown. I have a really small amount of this left, and anyone who's followed me for a while will know I hate finishing things up. Ay, ay, ay. I caught myself earlier. That's pretty bad, actually. I'm gonna need to put plaster on that. Caught myself earlier. I um, I just the craziest things happened to me yesterday. I was moving furniture around, um, flat pack furniture around. Uh, moved one thing. I was going to build the next thing. I was opening it on the dining table. I don't know why I was doing that. I pulled one thing out. Something else fell out onto my toe. There were words. There was shouting. There were tears in my eyes. Um, it was not a fun time. So I was fairly certain I'd broken my toe yesterday. And then today cleaning something up in the living room and um, something like a drawer thing opened and it pulled a wire, the wire pulled a lamp and the whole ball thing that was like loose on the lamp, this, this thing from Ikea, shattered but like threw itself at me at the same time. So I've like cut myself here. It was bleeding a lot but I felt like maybe it was better to take the plaster off when I was in the bath. I think it needs to go back on. Okay, so as I was saying, I don't like to finish things up and um, I'm trying to break myself of that habit and I am using the last of my Bobbi Brown face base because I love it. And why am I not using a product that I love? It makes no sense. Kind of in between what I want to do as a base because I want it to look really natural, but I'm kind of thinking I might go, you know, maybe I'll do a bold lip because I'm wearing a black and white jumper. I'm gonna have like a voluminous blowout, as you can tell. Um, so maybe I'll do kind of like a smoky wing and a bold lip, in which case I can do a more natural base. I'm gonna do number seven, Hydra Luminous. I mentioned in my previous video that my shade is Calico, and I just mentioned that kind of like in passing as a, uh, just so you know, um, if you're interested in, in shade matches. And they said that they were much, that someone, a commenter, said they were much fairer than me and that their shade was Calico. I'm definitely still a little tan from Florida. I mean, I'm not tanned by usual standards, but I have some color. Um, calico, I mean, as you can see, calico is exactly my shade. It's perfect. Um, and in the video that they commented on <laughs> specifically, I've been wearing a lot of bronzer. I've been wearing a contour from Primark that I really like. I'll show you in this video. Um, but I think that that probably led them to believe I was deeper skin tone than I actually was. Um, but yeah, calico is, it's the creme de la creme. And the Hydra Luminous, if you're looking for um, something to make it look like you've just got really good skin. Like it's, it is luminous. It's, it shows your skin through it, but it evens everything out and gives you a really nice finish. I'm gonna do, where is it? That was a mistake, that really hurt my hand. Uh, I'm gonna do the cream contour now. This is, does it have a shade? I can't see one anywhere and I've got greasy hands so I can't. Oh, there we go. Open this. Um, Probably not the easiest time to do this since I've got rollers in my hair, but I want to leave them in as long as possible. Um, this is my absolute favourite bronzer of the moment. It was for a long time, 
like potentially years, the Fenty Cream Bronzer. And don't get me wrong, I still really love that. But this, it blends out so nicely. The tone of it is a little bit cooler because obviously that's a cream bronzer, whereas this is a contour. But if you are fair and you struggle with bronzers being a little bit too orange, I love this. And if I use it with a damp beauty blend, a bl blender, um, I find that I can build it up, build it up without going too heavy because it is a bit much. Use it sparingly if you're applying it with brush, which I was originally. But now applying it this way, it really does look so much more natural. I feel like the hairline situation is going to be really difficult with, <laughs> with my hair in the way. Another really nice base product that looks super natural but is pretty long wearing is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. I didn't like the original shape tape. I thought it was too dry. It looks really cakey on me. Um, and now I use this after, this is like as contoury as I've ever been because I still want it to look natural. Um, but this is now my preferred way of putting on my base. So I'll do my contour slash bronzer first, obviously after foundation, and then I do my concealer because I struggle with, I just get bronzer everywhere. I get a little bit out of control. Uh, then I'm going to put in a little bit of cream blush. This is the one I'm enjoying right now. It's the Hydromaniac Blush Glow Hydrator from Urban Decay. This was sent to me. It's so easy to work with. It looks like, wow, that's going to be insane, super, super intense. But it's not. It's like um, kind of a watercolory type situation. Um, I mean, look, it's like a sheer gel. I absolutely love it. It's my, my favourite things are lip and cheek products and this at the moment, this and the contour from Primark are just everything. It just like, how could you not love that? It's so easy to apply. I don't feel like you can get it wrong because it is so sheer, even though it's like a real neon pop of colour. I am going out this evening so I'm adding a little bit of a an extra layer of everything to try and make this last. This is the NYX HD eyeshadow base, which I really, really like. It's been my favorite, so basically, since I discovered it, because it used to be the Primer Potion from Urban Decay. And there are a few things that I feel like NYX is the uh, lower cost Urban Decay. Like the lip liners are really great, the eyeliners. I don't not the eyeshadows, they don't even compare, but there are some things that I feel like, yeah, they've kind of got it almost on a par. A pencil in my brows, which need to be done, NYX again. Uh, this is the micro brow pencil in taupe, and they need particularly to be done because my microblading fades to a pink colour. I haven't had it done for a couple of years, but I still absolutely i am super glad that I had it done, even when I have to pencil them in like this. It gives me an outline to work with, which I didn't have before. And um, when I leave them with just kind of like a little wash of foundation or tinted moisturiser or whatever, when I'm not doing like a full, full face, then it kind of knocks out that pink to make it no big deal, really. It's not really something that, that bothers me when I'm not wearing makeup. I really don't think about it. But it is something that if I'm going to make the effort, it's it's then very obvious to me that I've got pink eyebrows. I've also been making my brows a little bit fuller from the underneath. I like that look. Just bringing them under. I'm sure it's like you're supposed to do it from, from above to lift, but I feel like, you know when you see celebrities and you're like, have they had something done? And they look kind of youthful. And I always feel like their brows look fuller you know, it's really weird. I've got a little spot there under my brow and a little spot there. I wonder if I'm allergic to something I'm using. Um, I always feel like their brows look fuller and they look kind of fuller from underneath when they look like, hmm, maybe they've had something done. I'm thinking specifically in my mind of Sofia Vergara because uh, she definitely started doing her brows fuller and I don't know, I think it's kind of useful to not have the super arched brow. So that is the base. I'm going to do the thing. 
no woman over 35 should do. I'm joking, I'm joking, but also kind of not. I'm gonna bake. I'm not gonna put it everywhere. I just put it in the corners. I put it here specifically because as I'm like doing this throughout the day or evening, as the case may be, it settles into that little line right there. My chin. I'm really just teasing. I mean, I'm not. Oh, do you know what I might do? Just over my eyes as well. So we don't get creasing when I put my um, shadow on later. Um, yeah, I'm not you know, reinventing the wheel. I'm powdering my T-zone. I'm going to give this like 10 minutes. Going to go and get a drink. Um, probably let my camera battery charge a minute because it's flashing at me and I'll be back. I slightly recharged dusted off and I'm gonna do eyes. Um, I have been very disappointed to find out that the natural eyes palette from Too Faced has been discontinued. Imagine, imagine. I even said in my last vlog, like every time I recommend something it gets discontinued. Never in my life did I think that was gonna get discontinued. It's like, it's a staple. Anyway, as a result, I am trying to use other things that you can actually buy, maybe, hopefully, probably not, um, but also, try and kind of wean myself off palettes that aren't always going to be available. This is the Viseart, this is the Neutral Mats 01. It is mega expensive. It was sent to me. I would not have purchased it. However, now I have it. I do understand for a long time, possibly years, after this was sent to me, I didn't even use it. I didn't use products that I wouldn't have purchased myself because I thought, not that it was like disingenuous, but I was like, well, you know, I never would have had this product so I never would have recommended it because I wouldn't have spent my own money on it. Um, and then I kind of went through a phase of like making less and less beauty content and not really accepting any PR and I was kind of using what I had. I started using some of that stuff that I'd been holding on to like, oh, I'm not gonna use that, I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, it's amazing. For those wondering, if there is anyone wondering, often you get stuff, like it's, it sounds, because that sounds worse than it is, you get stuff without ever hearing from anyone. It's not like I said, yeah, I'd love to hear about this palette and then just never talked about it. I've never spoken to anyone from Vizio. I've never spoken to anyone from Pixie. You just randomly are sent things sometimes. And um, although it is gifted, it, there's no, there's literally nothing to say you ever have to talk about it. So yeah, I actually do think that this is worth the money. If you were gonna have like one palette that you wanted to work, you wanted to know every time you picked it up, it was gonna do what you wanted it to do. It lasts really well in terms of like, it lasts on your face, but it's also so easy to work with. The shadows blend so nicely. I think Too Faced and Urban Decay are like this for me. They're like the top, I absolutely love them. And then Viseart is like, just a little bit above. I'm trying to create a kind of a smoky wing and I'm trying to make it even on both sides even though my eye, uh, my eye, eye, my eyes aren't even on both sides. So that's tricky. I took maybe three or four shades of brown and kind of just did, or black as well, kind of just did the black and made it into the brown. Now I'm realising I didn't do a base. I obviously put my powder on underneath it all, but I didn't do a base, which was a mistake. So I'm going to kind of work around it and then sharpen up the line again. I mean, it's supposed to be smoky to begin with, isn't it? So it doesn't need to be a sharp, sharp line, but still should have done this first. Got carried away because I struggle with a wing. I struggle with a wing. Now I'm a little bit older. I've always had hooded eyes, but now even more so it's like, this one is is different to this one. And so they kind of higgledy piggledy and it all disappears. But then when you look like this, it's so pretty. Pretty happy with that. Do you know what? I think I'm going to take out the rollers before I do anything else because I don't want to smudge everything. Like, you know, I went, oh, attacking myself constantly. I already had to squeeze the top off that I was wearing when I put the rollers in without thinking, knowing I was gonna to have to have a bath with the rollers in. Nightmare. Um, so I didn't wanna to have to squeeze my t-shirt on over the top of this. 
So let's just pull out some of the pins. Um, it's always a gamble leaving your hair up until the last minute, but with this style, I think it's, where's the pin? I think it's one of those things that it just takes time up front and then at the end, it was all worth it. This is the time of yikes because I can, oh, I've got to take my rings off because it's catching in my hair. I can feel all the mousse, which is not usually my vibe. I don't love a lot of styling products, but it's kind of necessary for this. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's a lot of hair. It's a lot of hair. T-shirts on, hair is enormous. We'll deal with that in a second. In fact, can I? Yes, I've got some clips I can put in to keep it out of my face while I finish up. Um, and then we'll, we'll come back to the enormous. Oh my goodness, I don't hate that. I mean, it's a little bit maybe dollish. But in, with the right outfit, I don't hate it. You gotta take it easy for a few weeks. I don't wanna cry. So that was um, Subculture Lip Liner, which I have to use with a lip balm, otherwise it's too dry. Even if I'm just using it, like, under any circumstance, there has to be something underneath it, whether it be a lip balm or freshly applied um, foundation, something to make it a little bit creamier. So otherwise I'm just not, it's not going on nicely. Um, but I do really, really like the shade. So I've just got that and a little bit of Elizabeth Arden AR Cream Lip Line. Lip Line? lip balm on uh, and then I smudged my every time they're not even dirty they're not even dirty but every time I use my lash curlers and I've done any kind of eyeliner it smudges it and I forgot about that and I used it anyway uh, so I had to then kind of go over a little bit and redo and then I've got my Lancome this was sent to me Lancome Lash Idol Mascara on so that is pretty much my entire look I'm going to now I don't I'm not brushing it that would be a mistake but I am going to use a little bit of the got to be oilicious someone said the other day that they couldn't find this online so if I've done it again and cursed it into being discontinued I apologize but this is this is the whole thing I might even put a little bit of hairspray on just to hold it but I did this a couple of weeks ago and I was so impressed with it I've done similar things in the past but I think it's the mousse it's the mousse that's the thing that made the biggest difference uh, on like volume and hold. I don't think you can get this wrong, honestly. Um, I've done similar things in the past and it's always turned out similar, but it hasn't held as well or it hasn't been as big. Um, I, just give it a go, give it a go. Tongs, most people have tongs. If you haven't got tongs, you can probably do it with a straightener. It just needs to be kind of like a hot piece of hair, roll it on up, pin it up, hairspray it, mousse beforehand. It's the future, it's the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll link everything that I used for you below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.